Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Nadia Jessup and today I'm going to talk to you about measuring the international student experience of inclusion in the UK and what that means for well-being and educational performance. Over 670,000 ambitious students come from around the world to study in the UK. The most recent figures estimate that almost one in four university students in the UK are international students. This diverse group brings an estimated total net benefit of approximately 37 billion pounds for the UK economy. According to the UK Council for International Student Affairs, international students living abroad for the first time tend to report lower psychological well-being, with social withdrawal being one of the associated effects. One way of addressing concerns about international students' quality of life is by considering their mental health and well-being, in addition to their academic engagement and performance. A considerable body of research supports that social inclusion is important for mental health and well-being over a wide cross-section of society. My research conceptualizes student inclusion as a multidimensional construct, hence the name multidimensional student inclusion, or MDSI for short. It draws from a theory of social inclusion put forth by Richard Bailey. I look at inclusion across three dimensions and two levels. At the interactional level of inclusion, there's relational inclusion, which focuses on feelings of belonging when interacting with others. Then at the systems level of inclusion, there's physical inclusion, which focuses on concepts of space and place. And finally, functional inclusion, which focuses on issues of equity and power. Thus far, my preliminary research on this concept of multidimensional inclusion has tackled four main questions. One, how does one measure inclusion as a multidimensional construct? Two, how does multidimensional inclusion relate to international students' mental health and well-being? Three, how does multidimensional inclusion relate to international students' academic engagement and performance? And four, are there differences in multidimensional inclusion among international students and home students? Using a three-step psychometric scale development process of item generation, theoretical analysis with subject matter experts, and empirical analysis, specifically exploratory factor analysis, I developed a multidimensional student inclusion scale which my colleagues and I distributed online to 199 students, comprising 105 international students who are predominantly from regions such as Asia and Europe, as well as 94 home students. In addition to the MDSI, the online survey also looked at students' mental ill health and well-being, so for example, their levels of life satisfaction, anxiety, and depression, as well as indicators of academic engagement and performance. So for example, student reported average class attendance, assignment completion, unexpected performance, and demographics. Finally, we included some open-ended items to get a deeper understanding of the types of experiences students had with inclusion and or exclusion, and what were some of the contributing factors which could then be used to further flesh out the multidimensional conceptualization of student inclusion. To answer the first research question, how does one measure inclusion as a multidimensional construct, the exploratory factor analysis suggested a five-factor structure for student responses to the items on the MDSI scale. Four dimensions of inclusion hung together with clear relationships to one another. Two factors measured relational inclusion, so relationship with peers and relationship with staff. Two factors measured physical inclusion, inclusion on campus and inclusion in the neighborhood, while the fifth factor kind of stood out on its own. This was functional inclusion, which measures inclusion as it pertains to issues of equity and power. So there was a slight rethink in what comprised the interactional and systems level of inclusion. 
To answer the second question, how does multidimensional inclusion relate to international students' mental health and well-being? I examined the correlations between international students' scores on the five MDSI dimensions and their life satisfaction, anxiety, and depression. Well-being, when measured as life satisfaction, was positively related to all five dimensions of inclusion. In open-ended responses, students were telling us, it sometimes feels isolating being the only international student in my tutorials and one of few international students in my practicals and lectures. However, what keeps me going is my few close international friends who I can open up to and relate with on being an international student studying here. And my professors and tutors have all been friendly and welcoming. One specific professor sent an email out to all the international students, which I felt was very reassuring. Meanwhile, mental ill health was negatively related to forms of relational and physical inclusion. For example, greater feelings of inclusion among friends in the neighborhood and on campus was related to lower levels of depression. To answer the third question, how does multidimensional inclusion relate to international students' academic engagement and performance? I also examine correlations. Functional inclusion, that is equity and power in particular, was positively related to international students' overall academic engagement and specifically their self-reported class attendance and expectations for how well they would perform on their course. In the open-ended responses, students were telling us things such as, sometimes I feel slightly excluded in more rural parts of the city I study where I get the odd stare, but overall it has been welcoming. Finally, to answer the fourth question, are there differences in multidimensional inclusion among international students and home students? I conducted analyses to compare the mean scores between the two groups of students. The results showed that there were no statistically significant differences between international and home students on most dimensions of inclusion with the exception of functional inclusion. When it comes to issues of equity and power, we did see a difference in the extent to which international students and home students feel included. In general, international students reported lower levels of functional inclusion than home students. Now this was a small to moderate effect, but it was nevertheless a statistically significant difference. In the open-ended responses, international students were telling us, I'm more or less excluded as a Chinese student. Unlike many of my Chinese friends, my English level isn't the major obstacle, but the culture gap is. I found it difficult to understand UK memes, jokes, cultural products, and how to find topics to talk to. Furthermore, results showed that students' considerations of equity and power differed based on the region they came from. Specifically, non-European international students reported lower levels of functional inclusion than all groups of students. That is, whether we compare them to other international students from Europe or home students who identified as having European or non-European heritage. Again, this was a small but statistically significant effect. In the open-ended responses, international students were telling us, for example, I feel very included because I am a white individual with no religious background. I can see and know of it not being as good for people of color and people who practice their religion in everyday life. Now, this preliminary research is not without its limitations. For one, a larger sample will facilitate more conclusive results, especially when it comes to the psychometric properties of the MDSI scale, which I develop. Secondly, these results present a snapshot in time and are correlational in nature. Thus, while we're able to say with some confidence that these variables are related in expected ways, we cannot say, for example, that greater inclusion causes greater well-being. Nevertheless, despite these limitations, a specific strength of the current research is its complementary mixed methods approach. The qualitative data we got from the open-ended responses to the survey helped to strengthen and enrich the conclusions that could be derived from the quantitative data. So for example, 
The qualitative data is what provided the first clues that there were some differences in experiences of inclusion and or exclusion based on international students' home region. To touch on some of the main takeaway points, with regard to the relation between inclusion and international students' well-being, from a university administrative perspective, much effort goes into the quality of teaching and learning which international students appreciate. However, they also seem to be longing for greater inclusion among British peers and neighborhoods. How can we foster more meaningful connections among international and home students and within communities where universities are based? In the open-ended responses, we had students who mentioned being desperate for meaningful interactions with peers. Finally, with regards to the relation between inclusion and international students' academic engagement and performance, the fact that functional inclusion Issues of equity and power was the one dimension where international students differed from home students and that it was related to students' academic engagement and performance requires careful consideration. How can universities better support equitable treatment and representation for international students? As one international student put it, just be human around me, like I'm not different, just another person to talk to and interact with, treat me with no preconceived notions. Going forward, we hope to make some additional comparisons among groups of students. For example, students living on or off campus, as well as comparing undergraduate and postgraduate students. Additionally, we hope to conduct some experimental research to, example, to examine sorry, how EDI messaging and changes in physical environments influence international students' inclusion, well-being, and performance. And then finally, we hope to conduct some longitudinal research to track changes in inclusion and well-being over the course of students' time at university. It is my hope that eventually these lines of research will help inform the development of sustainable interventions aimed at improving international students' experiences at UK universities, thus making sure that international students are not just invited to the party, but that they are also asked to dance. And last but not least, I would like to acknowledge and thank all of my collaborators and colleagues who contributed to this research. Thank you.